Insight with Apostle Tope Aladinusi. It will teach you. Secondly, it will remind you. And today I want to just dwell on the part of reminders. Because if you understand how the Holy Spirit reminds you, then the way it teaches you in your mind is similar to the way it reminds you. Christ Treasure Center, raising Christ-like leaders. Many times, people just, just sit down, think of something, have a plan, and go and execute. And they realize from time to time that they are making mistakes. Some of those mistakes are avoidable. But because they have not taken time to really understand how God works, how God speaks, how to chat with God, they make costly mistakes. We have seen people make costly mistakes in their marriage, costly mistakes in their business, costly mistakes in their ministries, costly mistakes in their health, in their life, just because they were unable to Take the right decision. And today, I want us to look at how do you get to a point whereby you can use dialogue with God. Imagine if you always doubt God for everything. You won't miss it. Imagine if you can really dialogue with God and say, so this thing I'm about to do, you know, what are your thoughts? And God is saying, hey, this is how it should be, this is how it should be. And you execute. Yeah, everything will be fine. So you need to aspire as a believer to get to that point. You may not get there today. You may not get there next week. But it's just a goal that you have ahead of you. And I want to teach you how to progressively move towards that goal. Because it's not what is good enough that you should be aspiring for. That something is good. I told you uh, from Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1. How the serpent came to deceive Eve. And Eve saw a tree. And the Bible says that the tree was good. It looked good for food. It was good for our eyes. But that thing that looked good ended up bringing humanity down. And so that something looks good is not enough. That something sounds good is not enough. That you want to go into a business and they explain it to you and it, looks, it makes sense. It looks good. Doesn't mean that you should jump into it. That you want to, um, you know, Go into a marriage and it looks good. Of course, it always looks good. <laughs> I never saw I never seen someone that I went to the marriage and they thought it was, and the person was looking bad. They looked good. They sounded good. Everything was good. It's not enough for it to be good. We talked about Acts chapter 15, verse 28, where the early apostles in a bit to resolve a matter that came up in the church said, It seems good to us and to the Holy Spirit. He seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. And we declare that as believers, it's not enough to just say, oh, something is good. You should say, it's good to me and the Holy Ghost. It's good to me and the Holy Ghost. Not just, it's good to my eyes. Is it good to the Holy Ghost? You have the capacity to also say, I want to take a, this step it's good to me and good to the Holy Ghost. It's not enough to say it was good to your eyes. Is it good to the Holy Ghost? When you begin to walk in this dimension, you experience growth. When you follow God, when you understand them, things are easy. I've made several breakthroughs in my life, personally. Things that would take 10 years, I get it in one year. 
Things that will take 20 years, sometimes you get it in two months, just because you just, you are just led. You are just led. When you follow God, it leads you into abundance. Psalm 23 verse 1, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. Look at that verse again. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. Psalm 23 verse 1. That means if you don't have everything that you need, maybe the Lord is not the one you're sh- that's shepherding you. Maybe you are leading yourself. If the Lord is leading, you cannot lead you to lack. It will take you to the place of abundance. Now, the question is that, how do I know what God is saying? Some people say, I have these several voices that are talking in my mind. How do I know which one is even God? How do I come to a place where I can dialogue with God? The first thing I want you to understand, before we even talk about that, is that when Jesus was on the face of the earth, how was his relationship with his disciples? Can you remember? Were they always chatting? Were they always talking? They were always talking. They had dialogues. They, they were always interacting. You understand? Say, hey, Peter, who do, you, who do men say that I am? Then Peter would say, that, who do you say that I am? They would say, that master, why couldn't we cast out that demon? Then we talk. Sometimes when you do this, it doesn't work. Say, oh, God, why did it not work? You should hear. You should know. They will ask every question. And Jesus will answer. Master, why did you speak to them in parables? Okay, what did that parable mean? They will answer. So when he said he was living, they were like, ah, you are living. It was time to pay tax. He said, Master, what do we do? He said, go and get this. Go and get, to, go, go and get a fish. Anytime they had any issue, they speak to him. He said, this is what you need to do. There was that conversation. So if you are the one, you ask someone like that in your life. The person will say, I'm going. You cry. They say, no, 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 you cannot go. God forbid. He said, no, calm down. In John chapter 14, verse 26. He said, I will pray the Father, and he will send you another comforter. That is, if you look at it from the originals, someone like me. You send the advocate, my representative. You can see that? What I was doing, this Holy Spirit will now represent me. The constant interaction you had with me, chat you were having with me, you will have the same thing, but this time around, with the Holy Ghost. Like 1 Corinthians 2.10, it says, the Spirit searches everything and shows us God's deep secrets. So the Spirit teaches, it reminds, it searches, it shows. It shows you things, tells you that this is the way to go. And as believers, we should cultivate the habit of always having that chat. Just picture what happened within Jesus Christ and his disciples. That is the kind of relationship you are wired to have with the Holy Spirit. Interaction, constant conversation. We have not been trained in Christianity like that. We seek to say, I just come, tell God, I want this, I want this, and go. No, look at that. I will send the Holy Spirit. I will send him to you. So don't bother to be worried. All of you will have him exclusively to yourself. You know, there was a time that they used to compete who is the greatest among us, who is the closest to just such among us. He said, when the Holy Spirit come, he will be closest to all of you the same way. You have him exclusively. It's, it's like you have just your house. You have just your own house. Everybody has just their own house. That was the mindset. And that's why he said it's more profitable that I go. Maybe now, it's physical interaction. So you have to be close to me. Then, because he comes to live in you and he will be in you, everywhere you go, you are talking to him. Wow, what a life. That is something more than gold. That is something that is more than any earthly thing that God and you can be discussing. And the good thing is that In that same verse, or that same chapter, verse 16 of John chapter 14, Jesus Christ told us that this Holy Spirit, that when he comes, he will never leave you. John 14, 16 says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He will never leave you. Because some people feel that, oh, when I do something wrong, the Holy Spirit goes. 
Then when I cry, he comes back. When I do something wrong again, he goes. Pam, 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 pam. That's not the way the Holy Spirit be. He comes to stay with you. And that's why in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, the Bible says, do not grieve the Spirit. Don't grieve him. He can be grieved. He says, the Spirit, you are sealed with him until the day of redemption. He has sealed you, so don't grieve him. He's there with you, and he will always be there with you. Now, for you to get to that, you need to train yourself. Now, I'm not saying this every time that when you speak to God, you have to interact like that. There are various ways God leads. God can lead you with a vision. God can lead you with a dream. God can lead you with audible voice. God can lead you with symbolic actions. There are different ways God leads. We have about over 20. I'm going to count them for you. But all these ways, they don't happen every time. For instance, you won't see vision every day. You won't fall into trance every day. You will not dream every time. But I'm saying, I miss all these ways. There is also a way that you can always have a regular conversation with God. And as believers, we can step up ourselves to this level. And you've got to train yourself. You need to train yourself. Hebrews 5.14, NLT says, Solid food for those who are mature. Who, through training, have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. It becomes a skill when you train yourself. You can be skillful at it. Christ Treasure Center, raising Christ-like leaders. Searching for a place you can call home? A place of love and warmth. A place of fellowship. A place for the young and the old. A place of prayer. A place of study of the word. A place of the supernatural. Different people from all walks of life and united in one purpose, mirroring Christ's pricelessness in every heart, in every homeland. Worship with us every Sunday by 7.30 and 9.30 a.m. and on Wednesdays by 6.30 p.m. at CTC Place, 112 Commercial Avenue, Sabo Yaba, Lagos. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter on the handle at eChristTreasure. Email ctc at christtreasure.org or log on to www.christtreasure.org. Telephone 0700 Treasure. That is 0700 8732 78. Seven three, Christ Treasure Center. Welcome home. Christ Treasure Center, raising Christ-like leaders. You can be skillful at it, and it will not just jump on you. You need to train yourself to recognize the difference between good and and wrong between what the Lord is saying and what the Lord is not saying. You can train yourself. And how do you train yourself? Let's go back to that John chapter 14, verse 26, that we read. It says, but when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything. And it will remind you of everything I have ever told you. There are two things the Holy Ghost does, as we saw in that scripture. One is that it will teach you. 
it will teach you. Secondly, it will remind you. And today, I want to just dwell on the part of reminders. Because if you understand how the Holy Spirit reminds you, then the way it teaches you in your mind is similar to the way it reminds you. It will not teach you with a different voice than the way it reminds you. Now, the basic way the Holy Spirit teaches us, like Jesus Christ says, and also reminds us, says what I have told you. That means what you have been told before is the foundation. And what Christ has told us before are already documented in scriptures. That forms the foundation and the basis of what else it will teach you and remind you of. Because it says of everything I've told you. Now, the mind of Christ for so many matters, for general things, have already been documented in scriptures. And that is why for you to be sound in following God and having a chat with him, you should be sound in the doctrine of our Lord Jesus Christ. You need to understand him. You need to understand the person. You need to understand the scriptures. 2 Timothy 3.16 says all scriptures is inspired by God, and it's useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. So it says all scriptures, all scriptures is inspired by God to teach. So there's already been a teaching that has gone out, a body of knowledge that has gone out, you need to be grounded in that. You need to understand that. Psalm 119, verse 105, it says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It guides you. It tells you what to do. It guides your feet. It lightens your path. So it says, All scripture was given by God. And it teaches us between right and wrong. Let me ask you a question. When you want to know when you want to have a conversation with God, many times it's a right or wrong conversation. It's a right or wrong conversation. You want to know what is good for you. You want to know what you should do. You want to know the step to take. And he said, all scripture is already useful to teach you what is right and what is wrong. It starts from there. And that's why you should read the New Testament very well. You should know it very well. You should know the epistles very well. And the words of Jesus. And with time, as you have mastered that, you also need to go read the entire Bible in the light of the revelation of Jesus Christ. Because he has already said something. And when the Spirit of God now comes, it will leverage on what has been said. Remember, he said, it will teach you everything and remind you of what I have told you. He's not going to come and start from ground. He's not going to start from ground zero. So we need to understand the scriptures. We need to spend time to change our minds with the scriptures. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. It says, Don't copy the behavior of this world and the custom of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. By changing the way you think, then you will learn how to know what is God's will for you. His will is good, is perfect, is pleasing. By changing, and what do you use to change the way you think? What is that thing that transforms you to that new person? It is what has been revealed already, which is the scriptures. You cannot be aspiring to go for a PhD in a course when you've not done first degree, maybe master's degree. You're a fraud. You're a fraud. So you want to interact with God. You don't even know the person of God. You don't, know the, you don't have the knowledge of his mind and his will. You don't know the general body of knowledge. Second Peter 1.12. Apostle Peter says, 
I will always remind you about these things. Even though you already know them, and you are standing firm in the truth you have been taught. You know, many times you come to church, you like to hear new things. The believer should be reminded of the things over and over. He says, you already know them, and you are standing firm, but we will keep reminding you. Because once you have that, that's okay. Everything will take care of itself. I will keep on reminding you. You know them. You are not falling. You are standing. You are not just standing. You are standing firm. And I will keep reminding you. 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 Brethren, what I'm trying to tell you today is that John 14, 26 says when the Holy Ghost comes, He will teach you everything. And it will remind you of everything I have told you. And I'm here to tell you that you are already hearing God. But you just want to start. I want you to start from today having a conversation with him. Start having a conversation with him. You know why? The spirit already reminds you. You've been coming to church. You've been trained. You just got born again. You read some scriptures. Whatever it is. Once the Holy Spirit comes into your life, it will teach you and it will remind you. But you say, how do I know his voice? And I'm telling you that the same voice he speaks to you when he reminds you is the same voice he will speak to you when he's telling you things normally. And if you understand that interaction, you can ask questions and you will see that same voice respond to you. And you keep talking and keep talking and keep talking and having that kind of interaction. Did you get it? How many of you have tried to do something wrong before? And they say, hey. You, so, okay, sorry, not the Holy Spirit. Something told you not to do it. Because that's what we call it. Something said, hey. That's what you're about to do. Remember, First John says this. Remember that day. The Bible says this. How many of you have had the encounter before? Let me see your hand up. If you don't have it, maybe you are not a believer. <laughs> Every believer is always reminded. Yes or no? When you want to do something, something pops up in your mind. And it comes, how does it come to you? It comes like a voice. Say, ah, that thing that you want to do, don't do it. And it will tell you why. It reminds you of a scripture. Or it reminds you of something you have been taught before in church. Now, when it reminds you, what do you call it? You said something told you, right? No, it's the Holy Ghost. Now, when it reminded you, did you feel some goose, some goose pimples? Or did you feel as though your head were blowing out? How did it happen? It looked as though your mind was speaking to you, like a normal conversation. Hey, continue talking. That is the Holy Ghost talking to you. It will remind you of the things I have told you. It reminded you of scripture. And like me, I will ask questions for that. I say, but God is still alpha. Sometimes it's not only sin. I talked about sin because everybody should have that experience. And you will know that one is very easy because you already know that, for instance, thou shalt not steal or thou shalt not commit fornication. Those things that are clear. When you want to do it, the way the voice will speak to you, you will know. Now begin to that same voice that speaks to you. You say, is my uh, something. No. Understand. It says it will remind you. So the Holy Spirit is reminding you of something about the scripture. That Holy Spirit that reminded you is the same way the Holy Spirit will speak to you for new things and teach you new things and tell you this is the way to go. You, you know, following the Spirit opens doors for us. Makes things easier for us. And it's not as difficult. You can dialogue with the Holy Ghost. But you start first from what has been revealed in Scripture. And the Holy Spirit always reminds you of what has been revealed. I mean, the way it reminds you of what has been revealed, the same way we will tell you about the next breakthrough, the next big solution, who you need to marry, what you need to do. It could be that same way we employ. And from today, I want to start having a dialogue with God. Because Jesus Christ says in John 14, 26, he says, when the Spirit comes, as my representative. Everything I was to use disciples, the Spirit will be to you. The relationship between Jesus and disciples was constant two-way communication. 
This only one way traffic that we're firing to heaven is not sufficient, it's not enough, it's not the original design. The design is that the believer has constant interaction with God. Stand to your feet. Glory. Christ Treasure Center, raising Christ like leaders. We believe that you have received a message from God. And before we go, we'd like to ask you a question. If you could not control the date you were born and the family you were born into, do you think you should be in control of your life? You know, God should be the one to control your life. So if you want to give Jesus control, you want to accept God's sacrifice. You can say this word after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross and on the third day, you rose again. I give you control of my life today and I believe I am born again. Amen. If you said that prayer, then you've taken a great step in your life. We would like to mentor you in this wonderful journey as you walk with the Lord. Please write us or send us an email using the details on your screen. Hallelujah.